On March 20th, OpenAI briefly took ChatGPT down. We believed it was primarily because there was some data leak in the form of conversation history. Somebody would have chatted something, that conversation was leaked to somebody else. But today we got to know that there are more information than just simply conversation history could have been leaked, including some payment information. OpenAI has put out a blog post and in this video, we are going to explore that blog post and understand what has happened, why this bug has, why this leak has happened and what they are trying to do with this. To start with, first, a very basic information. Nothing serious has been leaked in terms of like, how do you think what is serious? But you don't have to panic. Nothing serious has been leaked. But if you are a ChatGPT Plus user, there is some possibility that your account detail might have been shown to somebody else during a brief moment of time. I'll share with you what is the time. First, what is this thing? OpenAI has been saying that there was a bug in an open source library that they were using it and that bug had caused this issue. We got to know what the library is. It's a Redis Pi library. If you are going to use Redis, they have used a client side library for a Python binding. It's called Redis Pi. So that Redis Pi by library had a bug. We can get into the details of what the bug is. So this allowed, this is what they believed at the start. That's what they're saying. That other, they this bug allowed some users to see the title of another user's chat history. Like if, if you have ever used ChatGPT, you know that this is the place where you can actually see the conversation title. So what the bug has caused is some users could see the title of your chat history because there was something wrong. So you could have seen somebody else's chat history's title and somebody else could have seen your chat history's title. This is what it was initially believed. Like they believed this was happened and then they took the tool ChatGPT down and everybody thought ChatGPT is down. But it took them some time to come back and actually tell us like users of ChatGPT that this is caused because there was a data leak. They initially didn't say data leak. A lot of people thought this is a normal outage. In fact, like this blog post says outage, uh, but there was a data leak. Let's, uh, we, we have to be honest with that. The bug is patched. Uh, they restored the service. Everything went down. But when they did the deeper investigation, they figured out that approximately 1.2% of ChatGPT plus subscribers. Out of all the ChatGPT plus subscribers, we do not know how many of them are. Out of that, 1.2% ChatGPT plus subscribers who are active during a nine hour window, it is possible that their payment related information, they're calling it unintentionally visible to others. Now, what was that payment information? That's what the next section is going to tell us. It is possible that some users could have seen other users, first name, last name, email address, payment address, and the last four digits, and they emphasized on the only, last four digits of a credit card number, credit card expiration date. Full credit card numbers were not exposed at any time. I do not know how credit card fraud works, but I'm not sure like if you just know the last four digit number, and if you know the expiration date, and you know the address of the person, and you know their email ID. I don't know if you can get the remaining numbers. I, I'm not sure like, like probably somebody should be like really more intelligent than me who would probably know this answer. But it seems like a lot of information to me, like first name, last name, payment address, uh, email address, uh, four digit uh, number of credit card uh, and credit card expiration date. It's probably not released to hackers, but, uh, but I'm not sure like what people have done. Let's, let's keep a positive intent and then think that nobody misused it. So now what, what would have happened? Uh, they're saying that somebody should have opened the chat GPT plus account between 1 AM to 10 AM Pacific time. And around that time, um, you know, this, this, um, this, somebody could have clicked manage subscription. They're actually showing what all things have happened. Like th the problem here is that as you read the blog post, you always find something new, like the initial summary said something, and then you go and then you found out that there is payment information that is leaked and then you go and then you figure out that, you know, that when they sent out an email, something might, uh, something has gone wrong. Um, when you click the my account, something has gone wrong. That's all there. They're saying we are confident that there is no ongoing risk to users data. They are confident. Let's see. Uh, let's see. Uh, but they have reached out to notify individual uh, affected users. So if you were affected, most likely you would have got an email from them saying something has happened. 
everyone on to open ai is committed to protecting our users privacy and keeping their data safe cool that's fine we apologize again to our users and the to entire chatgpt community and we will work diligently to rebuild the trust i think the problem here is primarily not being very open and upfront it's not that i'm trying to be a very strong critic of them but i i believe that this could have a handle if they had better communication like everybody every time somebody had to actually figure out oh why is there an outage initially somebody would say always you know maybe the server went down just like the last time but then somebody said maybe there is a data leak and then somebody mentioned oh there is a payment information leak so the blog post could have happened at an earlier time the communication could have been like much earlier you could you would have seen like all these all these chat uh, open ai people they are all quite active on all these community hacker news reddit twitter uh, so yeah it's 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 a thing so now coming to the technical details if you are interested in the technical details of what happened so the bug was in the library called redis py because they use redis and uh, they reached out to redis maintainers they are speaking really good about redis maintenance that's good but i don't know i was uh, not feeling really good to see open source as a statement everywhere they mentioned that there was a bug in an open source library that caused our data leak i was not very comfortable with that i think a lot of people are cool with that that's fine so what is the detail here so we use redis to cache information in our server so we don't need to check our database for every request it's quite common that's why people use redis so you don't have to make server call every time uh, you reduce the time and also you reduce the number of calls so that's why they have used redis to cache the information we use redis cluster to distribute the load over multiple redis instances cool we use the redis py library to interface with redis from our python server which runs with async io so they have the server so they are using redis py which is a client um, which is a client library and they have used it to communicate with the python server um, with uh, which is like which runs with async io so the library maintains a shared pool of connections between the server and cluster and recycles a connection to be used for another request request once it is done when using async io request and responses with redis py behaves as two queues so when you are using when you when you are using async io so with redis py the request and responses behave as two different queue Red, request is like one queue response is like another queue the caller pushes a request into the onto the incoming queue and will pop a response from the outgoing queue and then return the connection to the pool so you can assume that there are two different queues one goes inside one comes out if a request is cancelled after the request is pushed into the incoming queue but before the response popped from the outgoing queue we see our bug the connection thus becomes corrupted and the next response that is dequeued for an unrelated request can receive data left behind in the connection and this is exactly where the problem has happened this results in an unrecoverable error server error and the user will have to try the request again this is default but in some cases the corrupted data happens to match with the data type that the requester was expecting so what gets returned from the cache appears valid even if it belongs to some other user so that's exactly why they have some other user have seen somebody else's um, data at 1 am pacific time on march 20th we inadvertently introduced a change what a time a two hour server that caused a spike in this redis request cancellation this created a small probability for each connection to return bad data what they mean bad data here is actually somebody else's leaked information huh? that's a very nice word but uh, they released they, they introduced some change and because the bug was already there due to this change when you made this request that that small gap that we just discussed at the top like between the two queues the other queue was giving bad data to you and uh, yeah, i i also said bad data it's actually leaked data this bug only appeared in the async io redis py client for redis cluster which has now been fixed they have they have mentioned a lot of things redis open source maintainers have been fantastic the where we go from here does not talk about anything that open ai is going to do it doesn't say what open ai steps are what steps open ai are taking like you know there are certain steps that they have mentioned here cool fine um but yeah where we go from here they've just praised redis uh, maintainers which is good like i really appreciate that they finally had some nice words to say about the open source library that they've been blaming but this is where it ends um it's not a big deal like i just wanted to cover this to show what has happened 
and what kind of impact is there and if you are a you know chat gpt plus user had you got any email from open ai this is what your data has leaked my problem primarily has been around the way they have been communicating this emphasizing on open source to say i know they wanted to say that it is not their system that was flawed but still having that emphasis on open source uh, system i was not sure how good it is and uh, the latency in which they were communicating the incident happens nobody knows people speculate then they communicate so all of this um, for a company that uh, puts on ai safety as somewhere like everywhere you see ai safety is mentioned for a company like that it it looks slightly absurd uh, the way this has been handled but yeah i hope this video was helpful to you in learning what was that open source library causing um, an issue to take chat gpt down and in fact like they have called it chat gpt outage but actually open ai took chat gpt down and um, if you have any question let me know in the comment section otherwise see you in another video happy prompting